Seasons greetings, happy holidays, and to those of you who celebrate, Merry Christmas. My name is Rob. This channel is called Big Rob's Van. If you don't know who I am, I'll give you a 30 second brief. I spent 2020 through 2022, like most of us, locked up at home, and during that time through YouTube, I discovered the movement called Van Life. I watched hundreds of van life videos and got addicted to the point where in 2022 i decided to buy my own van i bought a 2007 40 econoline cargo van the conversion started slowly but this year in 2023 uh, the project has picked up in earnest so i thought i would briefly talk about how 2023 has gone for me in terms of van life what I've done so far, what I plan on doing in 2024. At the end of the video, I wanna open some Christmas gifts that I got that are related to van life that I got from some of my family members. So 2023, well, to talk about 2023, I gotta go back to 2022. 2022, I bought the van and the van needed a lot of mechanical repairs i had uh, my buddies helped me fix door handles and some of the mechanical things that just had to be done uh, before i could even really start on the van conversion so really the van conversion didn't start until 2023 the beginning of this year that's the same year this year that I started all my social media sites. That's when I started Instagram. And I'm on Facebook and Twitter, but not as much. But on uh, Instagram, I'm Big Rob's Van. And on YouTube, which is where you're watching this, I am Big Rob's Van. And I started making videos documenting, at first, the conversion of the van, my van build, which went very, very slow. <laughs> And then over the past couple of months, some of the van trips that I have gone on. So uh, I will just say that I am not really a huge nature person. My dream is not to drive as far as I can off grid and spend the summer out in the middle of the woods. My personal goal for van life is to see more things in the country, to do some road trips and then have a place to crash a call as my home base in the van. I always like to put out full disclosure that I have a very nice house, I am married, I have a job, and so I am not going to be ever a full-time van lifer. I don't wanna live in a van, but what I do wanna do is use it as a tool to go see more things and do more things. Speaking of seeing and doing more things, I am parked right now in one of the parks in my town. You can see a little bit of the Christmas display behind you and there's Christmas display all around here. This is one of three major parks in my town that decorates uh, for Christmas. And tonight, in about four or five hours when it gets dark, the line to get into this park will be over a mile long. But right now, there is nobody here at this park. So that's the advantage of going and staying at uh, Christmas uh, light displays during the day. There's literally nobody there. The minute I said that, someone just walked up to the pavilion next to me and is now staring at me. <laughs> it's awkward for you, it's awkward for me. So let's talk about what I did to the van in 2023. Well, first of all, again, I uh, in, in the beginning of 2023, I had to basically reset the van. The van was full of gouges and rust marks and things like that. So I had to sand a bunch of the inside of the van down. I had to use uh, some putty to fill holes that were in the van. And then I had to paint everything with a Rust-Oleum paint to prevent rust uh, from uh, spreading. I, I got most of the rust out, but that was the very beginning. Uh, then the first thing that I really did this year was built a bed. I built a slat bed. Uh, the bed pulls out. So the bed normally is 24 inches wide. It's actually the, the top of the bed is 30 inches wide, but the mattress is 24 inches wide and uh, six inches thick. 
And then behind me as a backrest, I have an, another mattress just like that. So that makes up the whole 30 inches. The bed will pull out to be four foot wide. So I could put both of those mattresses side by side. But to be honest with you, I've never done that. And I don't think that I ever will do that. My wife is not that interested in going on van life adventures with me. So I think the van is a, is a solo van. So at some point, if I ever uh, rebuild the bed area, I won't bother with all that stuff about a slide out bed and all that. I will just build a, uh, a flat uh, frame to hold the mattresses and call it good. Uh, I also have plans on the other side uh, adjacent from the bed to build a big shelf unit uh, but I haven't done that yet and so I was really itching the last half of the year to get out in the van and do some stuff even though the van isn't quote unquote done and a lot of people will tell you that a van build is never done it's just in different stages of uh, pause so uh, what I did was I had an Ikea table. Uh, this is literally a $4 table and I threw that in the van. I used some bungee cords to hold it in place and, and it's actually done pretty well. Um, it will not hold up. Some of the, the part of the table peeled off due to the summer heat here in Oklahoma. It's not meant for that type of environment and it won't last forever. But until I could get the other stuff built, uh, it will do. When I build the cabinet, what I, I need to keep a place for uh, batteries, for leisure batteries. I need to keep make a spot for a refrigerator. I want to build a sink, and I've bought a lot of those things, but I haven't put them in. So that's something to look forward to in 2024. I have a refrigerator that's sitting in the box unopened. I have uh, all the parts to build a sink, but I haven't done that yet. That hasn't been started yet. So those are all projects that I will do next year. So after working on the van for several months, I got bored of working on the vans. I wanted to get out in the van. And so I started doing some quote unquote stealth camp. So I went to a parking lot that was across the street from a sushi restaurant. That was my ninja themed stealth camp. I recently did a stealth camp uh, in the parking lot of my local courthouse, which was a lot of fun. And that's the one where I learned that insulation is important. I learned that as I was laying on my back and watching my breath freeze on the ceiling of the van that I was staring up at. All my, I have to pause for a second because all my van life fans have arrived. I also did a stealth camp at the local movie theater, the movie theater that I grew up going to that was uh, torn down a few years ago. And that was kind of an emotional video. And I don't know that it actually fit the channel, you know, but actually uh, one of the things that I have struggled with over the past several months is figuring out where do I fit in in regards to quote unquote van life, you know? And, and one of the things I've talked about is that when you say van life, there's a big gap of what that actually means. Uh, there are people who are houseless that are living in vehicles and in vans. And there are people who, um, you know, have, like I said, quarter of a million dollar vans that go out on these huge trips and vacations. And I have said this before, I, I'm a firm believer that there are no rules to van life. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you can cook in a primitive fire pit. You can do what I did on one of my videos and cook in a microwave. Uh, or, you know, you can have a propane stove. You, you can just do whatever, you know. So uh, again, I, I, I really want to stress that, that um, I don't think that I'm following the rules because I don't necessarily know what the rules are. And more importantly, I don't care what the rules are. <laughs> I'm just out having fun. Um, I want to make videos. I want to, uh, you know, have a good time. I want to go see things and I want to share those things with you. So it's, it's no fun. You know, I've always been a social person. I've been podcasting for over 15 years now. I've just really started getting my feet wet in YouTube. But one of the things I've learned throughout my entire life is when I do things by myself, it's just not that much fun to me. I don't like going to garage sales by myself. It's so much more fun if someone goes with me and we can share that experience. I like dining out 
with someone. I like going to see things with someone. I like doing things with someone. And I want that someone to be you. I want you to go on these things with me. I want you to experience these things with me. I want to show you things and I want your responses to things. I want your feedback. I want your input. So I don't feel like this is a solo adventure. Physically it is. Solo it's it's me. It's me in the van, you know. But I want it to be a shared experience. And so that's what I'm looking forward to in 2024 next year is doing more adventures um, and and doing telling more stories. You know, I think when I watch van life videos and I have watched a ton of van life videos, the ones that interest me the most are the people who are doing things. Either they're going on a hike or they're going someplace and they show you that place or they tell you a story. And there are a lot of people doing van life that just say, here's my van and here's, and I'm in my van today. And it's just not that interesting. You know, and that's, I'm a storyteller uh, at heart. And so that's what I want to do is I want to tell stories and, but, but stories are no fun to tell if there's nobody listening, you know? So that's what I really want. I want to hear from you and I want to hear uh, your response to the stories and I want to hear what you think about the stories and uh, I want your feedback on the stories. So there's that. One of the things I wanted to talk about were all the people that I met online in 2023 through van life. Now, when I say met, I have to use air quotes because um, I haven't met any of these people in real life and um, not all these people have uh, responded to me. There is um, this, this phenomenon where when you watch people on YouTube, you feel like you know them, whether or not they know you or not. And there are a lot of people that I have watched and left comments on. And some of the people, of course, respond, you know, and um, uh, it, it's been fun talking to some of the people. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, like the traveling tailors and uh, ads from uh, Ads Ventures. And um, gosh, just, just several of the different people by the curb and, and uh, uh, Adventures uh, over 50. Just, just the people that you leave a comment and they respond and, and some of the people you have something in common with and some of them you don't, you know. And I'm gonna put this list up uh, on the screen. But these are all the channels uh, on YouTube that I currently follow that have something to do with van life. So, um, and, and the ones, you know, maybe I'll highlight the ones that uh, are the people that I've actually talked to or some of them I've supported on Patreon. So, you know, bought some of them a coffee, whatever, you know. Uh, but but uh, these are the people that I have watched that, and everybody that's on this list is somebody I have taken something from, whether it's just a comment, whether it's a, something, a design in their van, whether it's, uh, um, you know, it, just, just something, you know, all these people have like added just a little tiny bit to what I have done so far. And I hope that in 2024, somebody out there is watching my videos and gets inspired and says, hey, maybe I'll buy a van. Maybe I'll go out on an adventure because I, I'm here to tell you, um, the, 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 the barrier is not as big as you think. You don't have to know that much. You don't have to have that much money. You know, if you're, if you're buying a, a bigger van, a Sprinter or a Transit or something like that, those are expensive and you, and you might have to use it as a daily driver if you get a loan. But my van was about $6,500. I had a motorcycle. I sold my motorcycle and I bought the van. So it was pretty much an even swap for me. I've put a few thousand dollars into the build so far. And, and, uh, but the thing about these builds is you, can, you don't have to do it overnight. You can buy things a little bit at a time and add it to the van. So uh, I, if, um, if, if you're watching my video in the future, what I would say is do it. Man, I've watched... 
uh, a lot of these YouTube people where they will say they're, um, you know, they, they, um, you know, they're getting a van there in their 20s, they're going on adventures. I wish I'd have known about this when I was in my 20s. Um, you know, when, when you're uh, uh, middle age, when you've got a house and a job and a wife and kids, you can't just buy a van and take off across the country, you know, it doesn't work that way. But, uh, but you can do it on the weekends, you can do it in your free time, and that's what I'm doing, and I am enjoying it. Uh, but I'm definitely envious of uh, some of those younger people that are doing it full time because it just it just looks like a, a blast. Uh, so anyway, uh, thanks to all the people that have inspired me on YouTube, and I hope someday to inspire somebody else later on down the line. If I could say anything, I would say there's no rules, man. You don't have to have a bazillion dollar van. You don't have to have fancy camera gear. All that stuff can come over time. The most important thing is just having fun. Well, as you can see from the second part of this video, I have moved inside. We are now here in the man cave. When I started filming today, it was about 40 degrees outside, but the temperature has been dropping. You may have heard in some of the clips that the wind is picking up. So I decided to wimp out <laughs> and move uh, inside to go through my Christmas gifts. Before I do that, I want to address one elephant in the room, not the luck dragon in the room, that's a different guy. Uh, that I have created a Patreon for Big Rob's Van and I have created a Buy Me a Coffee page for Big Rob's Van. The very short version of this is that I create other content. I do video game streaming. I do a lot of podcasts and I have a Patreon page for that. And I've kind of been uh, double dipping a little bit but it doesn't mix very well. The van, people that are into the van life thing are not necessarily into retro computers and old video games, and those people are not necessarily into the van life stuff. So I decided the best solution would be just to separate those things. So that's what this is all about. I don't expect people to buy me a coffee. I don't expect people to join the Patreon. Uh, if you clicked like, on all my videos and if you subscribe to my channel, that would be, that would put me through the roof. <laughs> that is all a guy can really ask for. But a few people have asked about what's the way, uh, the best way to support me. And so that's what it is. I'll put the links on here. Again, don't feel obligated. If you like reading blog posts and behind uh, the scenes type of things, that's what you're gonna get on the Patreon. I upload or I uh, update my other Patreon page about twice a week. So that's about the level of activity you can expect on this. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is that I've had a lot of people, I did my first Q&A video, which felt a little silly. I, I, I have a lot of uh, imposter syndrome. I don't feel like I'm that qualified to be answering questions about van life, but I can certainly answer things from my point of view. But one of the uh, topics that I got a lot of questions on is how do I make my videos? What type of gear do I use? What do I edit with? What's in my camera bag? What do I take with me? What do I uh, want to buy? What was worth buying? What did I spend too much on? What do I? What did I waste money on? What wasn't worth it? And so I will be putting it together. I think that'll be my next video is a little bit of a behind the scenes type of things, but that's uh, the kind of things I'll also be talking about on the Patreon. And the Patreon is a lot better place for if you have questions 
Uh, and I'll answer questions to anybody. Uh, my, my email address is bigrobsvan at gmail.com. And of course, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, you know I'm on YouTube. Uh, so any of those places, if you ever have a question, reach out to me and I will do my best to answer it. But uh, Patreon will be more of a personal type interaction if you have questions, uh, things like that. So anyway, uh, with that being said, let's take a look uh, at the Christmas gifts I got that were van life related. Now, uh, my in-laws were big campers. My wife, when she was a kid, they went camping all the time. I, as a kid, never went camping. I, I was thinking earlier, I think I slept in a tent four times in my life. And twice was when we borrowed a tent and I slept in my backyard. <laughs> that would be two of the four times. I went on a fishing trip uh, with my dad when I was in sixth grade. And uh, when, after I was married, my wife and I, we went on a couple's adventure with another couple and we uh, stayed in, uh, we each took tents and, and we stayed at a, uh, a local park. So I was not a tent camper. I was not a camper type person. And so if you saw the video where I slept in the parking lot of the courthouse, that was the one where I was freezing. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. And my van was not prepared for that. And I think that might have made an impact on my wife's family family because they watched the videos and a lot of the things I got for Christmas from, uh, particularly from my sister-in-law, have to do not only with the van, but staying warm in a van. So let's go through here real quick and take a look at some of the things I got. First of all, uh, this right here is a package of chicken noodle soup and I just can't think of anything I would have loved to have more that night than a package of chicken noodle soup. Now, uh, if you remember on that video, not that video, on the last video, I took my microwave with me. So I just recently got that microwave. It does double duty. It stays out here in the man cave, but uh, when I'm going on trips, uh, if I need it, I'll take it with me on the van. So uh, chicken noodle soup, that would be great on a trip in the van. Uh, she also got me this uh, nice, one of these thermal mugs. It has a, a flip top here for sipping hot things. It came with some straws if you want to use it for cold things. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very cheap person. Uh, I literally yelped out loud inside of a Bass Pro Shop when I found out how much those Yeti uh, coolers <laughs> cost uh, or the Yeti uh, tumblers. I had no idea. If you had asked me what I thought they cost, I would have said $4. And I would have been, that would be like 10% of the price. So this is a very great gift. I'm really looking forward to uh, using this and taking this. You know, uh, on the uh, on the cold, the camp, the one I did at the courthouse, we stopped and got coffee on the way and I have a Bucky's uh, tumbler that I had brought with me and that kept coffee warm like all like hours and hours, like five, six, seven, eight hours, you know. So uh, these things are great. I like the handle on here too. So that will definitely get use in the van. Uh, I got lots of snacks. These are uh, planters peanuts. Uh, there's not a snake. <laughs> and here there's actually uh, mixed nuts in there. That I think it's good to have little uh, snacks inside the van, you know. Uh, I mean, you never know when you're going to get stuck somewhere. You're not going to be able to get out. You wake up at 2 in the morning. Uh, sometimes I have blood sugar issues, and so it's good to have a little bit of protein laying around. So, uh, yeah, I like those. This is actually from my daughter. Uh, she got me some wool socks. Uh, again, I had mentioned to them uh, how cold my feet were <laughs> during that entire video and that I was unprepared. I also bought these uh, hiking boots when we went on vacation to Minnesota, uh, I think at the Red Boot Store. But no, it was at um, uh, Duluth Trading Company and uh, they have in the basement, they have a bargain area and I bought these boots. And I tried to put them on, but all, I, my socks are like um, like cheerleader socks. They're like little tiny white socks that don't go all the way up my heel. And I put the boots on and it was just rubbing my leg. It was terrible. I hated it. So uh, my daughter bought me some wool socks. Those are going to get some use uh, for sure. Uh, here's another little package of food. A little thing of uh, jerky. I think, I mean, this is like snack size jerky in an emergency. Um, I might eat it right here during this video. I love beef jerky. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We got some other fun things in here. Oh, now these are, I think there's another thing that goes with these, but we'll find those in a minute. 
These are toe warmers. Again, complain about having cold uh, feet on a video and you will get these for Christmas. These are uh, toe warmers. I don't, I've never used this style. Uh, again, I'm not really a camper guy, but I could tell you I would have tried just about anything to warm up my toes uh, when I was on that, that uh, cold camp. So uh, those are going in the van. I'll need to figure out exactly how to use those. I'm going to set that aside for a second because there are two more. These are feet warmers uh, that um, I thought you had to like microwave these to heat them up, but my wife says no, they're like a, a chemically activated or something like that. So uh, again, I have a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn about camping and, and um, uh, a lot of times I learn things uh, by doing it incorrectly. <laughs> So um, that that's fun. My wife also bought me one of these. Um, this is a um, emergency blanket. I, I like how small a lot of these things are. I, I like Rubbermaid, the small Rubbermaid tubs, like the ones I like the ones that are uh, the size of a shoebox. And I plan on building storage for like a row of those in the van. I can put some in my cabinet already, but I like when things are small like this uh, and they, you can easily store them in that and I can put things uh, like things together. Okay, so these next two items, I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to use these for. These are inflatable pillows. I have pillows in my van. And so I don't, don't really know what to use these for. Maybe I would use them uh, like if we went to the lake or went something like that. I don't really know. Uh, I mean, they wouldn't take up very much space, but I have, I have uh, pillows on my uh, uh, throw thing or, you know, on, on my bed right now. So um, not sure what to do with those yet, but I'll, I'll find a, a, a reason to use them. Here's a uh, ice scraper. Another one, uh, you know, I had to borrow the ice scraper from uh, my other car. <laughs> to put in the van when I went and did the cold one. So uh, actually I'll put this one in my car because uh, it has a shorter handle and I will keep the one with the long handle in my van. So that'll get used. <clears throat> Here is a uh, small set of screwdrivers and a level. Good idea to have in the van. Um, you know, I don't have any repair tools in the van yet, and that's something that I should probably, especially with the condition my van is in, it's probably something I should keep in mind. So uh, that is a nice thing. There's also a knife, and uh, stay tuned in future videos because there is no way that I won't hurt myself with this knife at some point. Right, mark that down, you can clip that. <laughs> um, oh. Holiday M&Ms. Those are not going in the van. Those are going in my mouth. <laughs> and finally, I want to show you this. Those are very crunchy. <clears throat> this is super neat. I didn't know this existed. I'd never seen one of these before. This is a USB rechargeable hand warmer. Uh, if you do cold weather camping or hiking, you probably are already familiar with these. I had just never seen one. Uh, if you tap it here, it'll show you how much the charge is. You can see I charged it up. Uh, and if you hold it down for three seconds, it turns on and you'll see at the top there's a little temperature, um, which right now says 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, this one is double-sided. It heats both sides of this. So I guess if you're in a cold camping situation, you could hold this thing like this and it would heat your hands up. Uh, in that cold weather camp that I did, there is no, uh, no chance that this would not have been up my shirt somewhere. <laughs> it would have been right here. Uh, trying to warm me up. Uh, but that's uh, the lowest setting is 104 degrees. If you tap it a second time, it jumps up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And the third time, you can see it turns red here, and it goes to 140 degrees. Now, I did notice on the lowest setting, I think it tries to maintain that temperature. So it kind of like, it heats up and turns off and heats up and turns off. But at the higher settings, it doesn't 
uh, cool back down. It just stays hot. It is literally like a USB rechargeable rock that you could hold with you uh, and it will keep you warm. According to the manual on the lowest setting, this will last for up to eight hours. On the highest setting, it is four hours. So, uh, but even on that, I mean, on that, maybe on the middle setting, that'll get you through the night, you know? And um, it is, uh, I think I mentioned this, but it's USB-C rechargeable on this side. And in a pinch, you could recharge your phone uh, on this side. I will tell you that it has uh, just above a 5,000 milliamp battery. Uh, I'm recharging my GoPro right now from this, and this is 30,000, so this is six times, has six times the capacity as this. So I wouldn't count on recharging a lot of things with this unless you're uh, in an emergency, but uh, that that's not the, the major selling point. I mean, it also has a flashlight, like everything that's USB rechargeable has a flashlight, of course, but um, but yeah, the... Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the big selling point is that, that it heats up. So, uh, this is definitely going in the van. This will definitely, I will make sure that this thing is charged if I'm going anywhere that's less than about 50 degrees <laughs> because I'm kind of, uh, not built for cold weather camping. I'm getting there. I'm learning. So anyway, what a fun Christmas, uh, package of things that I got mostly from my sister-in-law, a couple of things from other family members, but oh, I forgot the big thing. Uh, this has caused a lot of uh, discussion and confusion in the house is uh, this. Uh, my sister-in-law also bought this. It says um, fashion instant noodles bowl. <laughs> uh, this is it. Uh, we've looked this up. It looks like she ordered this off of Timu, uh, and it's not very expensive. Uh, and so we're trying to figure out how exactly to use this. If you know exactly how to use this, please leave a comment down in the comments and tell me because we are kind of baffled. As you can see, most of the instructions are in Chinese. There's a lot of Chinese writing uh, all over the box. And if you open it up, inside, we have this bowl that looks like, um, I mean, it has pictures of, you know, ramen noodles and chopsticks. So it looks like it would be used for somehow preparing ramen noodles. Here's the confusion. The outside of this is uh, very clearly plastic. So I don't, I mean, I like I could press. <laughs> didn't know it did that. <laughs> Uh, it's plastic. So you would not want to put this on a direct flame. You wouldn't want to heat this up at all. Bad idea. Plastic. Not very thick plastic. Um, but inside, if I could get this uh, lid off here, uh, inside is stainless steel. So I don't think you'd want to put this in a microwave. Also, uh, the outside of the stainless steel bowl is exposed here. So even with the lid on, uh, because someone said, if you put the lid on, you might be able to microwave it, but but not, not with that on the outside. So you can't put it in a microwave. You can't put a direct flame on it. I don't really think this is made for cooking in. Um, but then what's odd is you have this lid uh, and then this um, uh, rubber nipple cork. I mean, it kind of, it comes out like a, like that, if you could just, like that. <laughs> and so, um, it's not like you would serve it in this and you set this on like you would say, I mean, it actually snaps on. Like, it is solid on there. So, I mean, if you, if you, I mean, the best we could come up with is that you would put ramen in here and then you would put hot water in here, but if you've already made hot water, why wouldn't you put the, the noodles in the thing that has the hot water? Like if you boiled water in a pan, when you put the ramen in there, why would you transfer all that into a second thing? I, I'm really confused. Um, maybe if you had something like a tall skinny thing that you heated water in and you put this, and then you put the hot water in, and then you close this, and then you put the rubber nipple in, and you, and you closed it, and then you made that noise a few more times. And then you, what, what's the advantage of it? I mean, when you wouldn't, you pour the water, maybe, okay, 
hold on, I'm talking through this, talking myself through this. You put the water in and you put the noodles, no? Maybe you put the water in and you put the noodles in and then you take the nipple off and you pour the water out. Why would you want the nipple out in the first place? I don't, okay, maybe you put the, you put the, maybe 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 you maybe you put the, maybe you put the, maybe you put the, maybe you put the, maybe Shot forever. Maybe you put the warmer, maybe you heat up your noodles. You put the, you turn on the hand warmer, you put it in with your noodles, you put that on like that. You wait about five minutes. That'll do it. That'll, that'll cook it right up.